I want to see you, Mataji. Hare Krishna. I don't see you either. Yeah, Mataji. Sorry, forgive me. Next time I will come on video. Today I couldn't come on video. Hare Krishna. Is there anybody who would like to? Thank you, Mataji, for showing your face. Hare Krishna. Is there anybody who would like to introduce them, sir? Hare Krishna Mataji, please accept my humble obeisances. Jai Shri Prabhupada, this is Preeti Vilasi Devi Dasi. Hare Krishna Preeti Vilasi Mataji, then with Pranam all glories to Srila Prabhupada. Thank you so much Mataji for joining and giving us sweet station. Thank you Mataji for everything, all the services. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, I think still Prabhuji did not join. Is there anybody? Would like to introduce themselves if would Prabhuji join. Okay. So I will chant until Prabhuji comes. Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadara Shri Vasa De Gaura Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Krishna Krishna Hare 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 Nam Hare Nam Ram Ram Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Nam Hare Nam Ram Ram Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Nam Hare Nam Ram Ram Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Nam Hare Nam Ram Ram Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Nam Hare Nam Ram Ram Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Ram Hare Nam Ram Ram Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Nam Hare Nam Ram Ram Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Nam Hare Nam Ram Ram Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Ram Hare Ram 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Ram Hare Ram 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Ram Hare Ram 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 Hare 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 Krishna Prabhuji Hare Krishna Mataji my pronouns can you hear me Yes, Prabhuji. Hare Krishna. Welcome to Bhakti Sarna Jepa Conference Call. Today we are very fortunate to have these praise Hare Krishna Prabhuji to enlighten us on the topic of teachings of Lord Chaitanya. The topic name is Con Conversation with, with, with Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya. It is two days session today and tomorrow. I have request everybody to be on two days so that we don't miss anything. Uh, thank you so much, Prabhuji, for joining and giving your valuable time and association this morning. We are very fortunate to have you on the call. Please take over the call, Prabhuji. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. I hope you can hear me clearly. Yes, Prabhuji. Okay. Thank you so much, Minita Gandhavika Mataji, for uh, kindly introducing me. Thank you to uh, Her Great Spriti Vilasini Mataji for kindly inviting me to speak on teachings of Lord Chaitanya and thank you to all the other wonderful organizers of Bhakti Sangha Japa conference such as uh, Kirti Dasundari Mataji, yourself and all the other wonderful devotees. So today we have to uh, discuss something about teachings of Lord Chaitanya. So uh, it's chapter 24, 25 and 26 over a duration of two days. 
So we'll begin with Mangala Charan because uh, it's the standard practice which has been established by our Acharyas. The Manuspriti says Mangala Chari Yuktanam Nityam Chai Prayatatmanam Japatam Chubhatam Chai Vavinipato Navidyate. That those individuals who always perform Mangala Charan and who are always endeavoring to progress in their spiritual life. So as they are chanting and as they are performing their Sankirtan Yagya, they do not fall down. So it's very important to perform Mangala Charan in order to ensure success. All our Acharyas have done that in the beginning of their creations. So we'll also do that. Chakshurun militam yena tasmai shri gurave namaha shri chaitanya mano bhishtam sthapitam yena bhutale soyam rupa kadamahyam dadati svapadantikam bande ham shri guru shri yutapada kamalam shri guru vaishnavamscha shri rupam sagrajatam sahagana raghunathan vitam tam sajivam Sadvaitam Savadhutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Padan Sahagana Lalita Shri Vishakhan Vitamscha Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prashaya Bhutale Shri Mate Bhakti Vedanta Swamin Nitinamine Namaste Saraswate Deve Gauravani Pacharine Nidvishesha Shunyavari Pashatya Deshatarine Namo Mahavadanyaya Krishna Prema Pradayate Krishna Krishna Chaitanya Namne Gaura Tushenama He Krishna Karuna Sindho Dina Bandho Jagatpate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namostate Tapta Kanchana Gaura Angi Radhe Brandavaneshwari Prashavanu Sute Devi Pranavami Hari Priye Vancha Kalpata Rupyascha Krapa Sindhu Pya Evacha Paditanam Pavane Pyo Vaishnave Pyo Namunama Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhunityananda Shri Advaita Gadadara Shri Vasadi Gaura Pukta Pinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Shula Prabhupada Ki, Jai Anantaputi, Vaishnava Vrinda Ki, Jai Nithai Gaur Premanande, Hare Hare Pol. So once again, thank you Mataji for kindly inviting me. Thank you to all the devotees who are kindly present here today in order to listen to what I have to say. And what I have to say is nothing but what Srila Prabhupada has written in his book, Teachings of Lord Chaitanya. Today we are discussing chapter 24 and uh, we'll also try to go into chapter 25. So I'll just briefly share my screen at the beginning of chapter 24 and then from there onwards I will start explaining the particular chapter. So I have shared my screen. All of you can see chapter 24 is in front of us. This is talks with Sarvabhaum Bhattacharya. Prabhupada explains when Lord Chaitanya met Sarvabhaum Bhattacharya at Jagannath Puri, the Bhattacharya being the greatest logician of the day wanted to teach the Lord Vedanta philosophy. So this is what, this is where the particular chapter begins. The previous chapter was discussions on the importance of Vedanta Sutra with uh, Sri Prakashanan Saraswati. And in this particular chapter, there is discussion with Sri Sarvabhaum Bhattacharya. So this is where the current chapter is beginning. Now, Sri Sarvabhaum Bhattacharya, as it was mentioned, he was the greatest logician of the day. Why was he the greatest logician of the day? It is because 
Sri Sarvabhaum Bhattacharya was very expert in Vedanta as well as in the Navya Nyaya school. So Nyaya, Nyaya Shastra or that branch of Indian philosophy which deals with logic and argumentation. So it is divided into two primary schools, Prachin Nyaya, which is the old school of Nyaya and Navya Nyaya, which is the new school of Nyaya. So Sri Sarvabhaum Bhattacharya, he was very close to the founders of the Navya Nyaya school because the Navya Nyaya or the new school of Nyaya was established in Mithila, which is close to Navadvip. But the Pandits who established it at Mithila, Sri Sarvabhaum Bhattacharya had studied from the original founders of the Navya Nyaya school. And he had bought this Navya Nyaya teachings to Navadvip. And he had also established schools of Navya Nyaya in Navadvip. And then after that, he had retired to Jagannath Puri. So, in Jagannath Puri, he was very highly respected. But when he saw Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he saw that he there was this young sannyasi. And this young sannyasi is dancing around, chanting Krishna Nam and so on and so forth. So the Bhattacharya thought that if this continues, this sannyasi may not be able to maintain his sannyas because he is a young sannyasi. So according to his calculation, Sri Sarvabhang Bhattacharya was thinking that his chitta or you know this Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's art may become unstable after a few days if it is not solidified with the cement of Vedanta philosophy. So <clears throat> the Bhattacharya you know, persistently maintained that since Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is young, therefore it is difficult to continue as a sannyasi unless he learns some serious philosophy. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu then agreed. But before Chaitanya Mahaprabhu agreed, there is also a big episode about Sarvabham Bhattacharya not being happy about uh, regarding the, uh, the Sampradaya of in which Chaitanya Mahaprabhu had taken sannyas. Then Sri Sarvabhama Bhattacharya asked which sampradaya he has taken sannyas from. So Gopinath Acharya said he has taken sannyas from the Bharti sampradaya. So Sarvabhama Bhattacharya says Bharti is Madhyam sampradaya. It's mediocre. You know, what I can do is I can arrange for him to get reinitiated into the top class Advait sannyasis. Puri. Saraswati, he'll get such a name. Dashanami, there are 10 you know, main surnames of the sannyasis. Puri, Tirth, Aranya, Saraswati, Van. So there are you know, 10 such names of the sannyasis in the Sampradaya of Adi Shankaracharya. In those days, Bharti was considered to be like Madhyam Shredi, mediocre class. So Sarvabham Bhattacharya said, I will not only teach him Vedanta, but if he permits, <clears throat> I will also arrange for him to be reinitiated in a top class monastic order. So Gopinath Acharya was, you know, he was very hurt by hearing these statements. And so he told Mahaprabhu all these things and Mahaprabhu said, no worries, don't feel bad. And then Mahaprabhu agreed to hear Vedanta philosophy from Sri Sarvabham Bhattacharya. So, you know, just like Krishna, he is Sarvagya, but he still accepts a Shaivite Guru, Sandipani Muni, as his Guru and hears the Vedas from a Shaivite Guru, Sandipani. Similarly, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is the Supreme Personality of Godhead, but he also wanted to you know, show that I have accepted Sarvabhaum Bhattacharya as a teacher of Vedanta. So Sri Sarvabhaum Bhattacharya spoke Vedanta Sutra continuously for seven days to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And this was in the Jagannath temple. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu at that time was hearing continuously but didn't speak a single word. 
So when the eighth day arrived, Sri Sarvabhang Bhattacharya said, like you've been hearing Vedanta Sutra for so many days, but you have not asked any questions. Because uh, the very style of Vedanta Sutra is about having doubts, raising doubts and questions. Vishayo samshayas chaiva purva pakshas tatvattaram nirnayas cheti siddhantam shastredi karanam spritam so, there is the original topic in Vedanta Sutra. This is how every adhikaran is carried out. There is some topic is put forward, then a doubt is raised. Vishayo samshayas chaiva. Purva pakshas. Then one opinion is given. Then tathottaram. Another opinion is given. The opposing opinion is given. And niranaya. Then Vyasdev gives the conclusion. Keti siddhantam. And that's how the final siddhanta is established. Shastri Dikaranam Spritam. This is how every Adhikaran, every episode in the Vedanta is discussed. But uh, you have not asked any questions. So I am not able to, you know, no questions means there can be only two meanings behind this. Either you understood everything <laughs> or you understood nothing. So I am not able to say whether you have understood everything or you understood nothing. So Chedini Mahaprabhu just said, I am Burkha. Fool number one. I have no capacity to understand Vedanta Sutra. But since you asked me you know, through Gopinath Acharya, therefore I tried to listen to you. But uh, I listened to your Vedanta Sutra explanation because it's every sannyasi should hear Vedanta Sutra. So I can understand the Sutra. But I cannot understand the explanations which you are giving. So when Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said like that, Sri Sarvabhaum Bhattacharya was taken aback. Because Sarvabhaum Bhattacharya was known as such a teacher that once Sarvabhaum Bhattacharya explains, people have no doubts remaining. So for Sarvabhaum Bhattacharya to spend seven days and giving all the detailed explanations of Vedanta Sutra and Adi Shankaracharya's commentary, and then after seven days, he was expecting some reciprocation. Now, well, you are a very good teacher. I learned everything nicely. But Chaitanya Mahaprabhu says, I'm a fool. I couldn't understand anything. So, sorry. You know, I, uh, your explanations, I'm not able to understand. So, Sarvabham Bhattacharya says, if you're not understanding, why don't you ask? Just simply, you're you know, sitting like this, silently like that. And just simply sitting silently means you've already made up your mind. It seems that you already, if, if, it, if it was completely new subject matter to you, you would have asked some questions or doubts. But no, you're sitting silent. It seems that you've already made up your mind. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu replied and said that, you know, as far as the Vedanta Sutra itself is concerned, I can understand Vedantam, original Mool Sutras. Original Sutras I can understand very well. But your explanations are very, very difficult. It's, you know, the original Sutras are very easy. But the commentary which you are explaining has shrouded the meaning of the Sutras. This commentary of the Advait Sampradaya of Sri Adi Shankaracharya, it is my clear opinion that it has shrouded the original meaning of the Vedanta Sutras. Now, at this point of time, somebody may say that, you know, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu had a bias against Adi Shankaracharya's philosophy. Therefore, he is saying like this. But this is not the case, dear devotees, not only Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, but there are many other commentators on the Vedanta Sutra who have given this opinion that Sri Adi Shankaracharya's explanation actually covers the meaning of the original meaning of Vedanta Sutra. So, there was a very commentator on Vedanta Sutra. His name is Sri Bhaskaracharya. Sri Bhaskaracharya is a you know, very learned personality. And he wrote his commentary just after Sri Adi Shankaracharya. So, his commentary is considered to be one of the earliest commentaries after Adi Shankaracharya. So, in the beginning of his commentary, 
in the very introduction of his commentary he has written a verse which i would like to share this verse is in front of us so this bhaskar shri bhaskaracharya in his introduction he says sutra vipraya samvrittya swabhipraya prakashana vyakhya tam yairidam shastram vyakhyeyam tan nivrittaye so he says sutra abhipraya samvrittya swa abhipraya prakashanat so on the pretext of commenting on the vedanta sutras some individuals have samvrittya shrouded the original meanings swa abhipraya prakashanat and you know given their own philosophy instead they have given their own philosophy vyakhyatam yair those who have done so idam shastram vyakhya iyam tan nivrittaye So those who have explained Vedanta Sutra in such an incorrect way, Vyakhya, yeah, my commentary, Bhaskaracharya says, is tan nivrittaye, is for disproving such incorrect explanations. So what to speak of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu? Bhaskaracharya also, in the beginning of his Vedanta Sutra commentary, says that he doesn't appreciate the commentary style of Shri Adi Shankaracharya because Adi Shankaracharya's commentary has covered the meaning of the sutras. so we should not think that chaitanya mahaprabhu is the only one who took objection all the vaishnava acharyas have taken objection to adi shankara acharya's commentary now this was spoken clearly by bhaskar acharya now after bhaskar acharya spoke this thing he wrote his entire commentary to disprove adi shankara acharya's vedant sutra bhashya so moving ahead you know mahaprabhu said that uh, actually vedic statements are self evident they don't need much interpretation whatever they say you accept it as it is don't you know try to put too much logic into it otherwise uh, vedas are swatah praman they are themselves the praman they don't need logic uh, as a helping stick so if we do that then what is the authority of the vedas vedas are they should stand on their own authority so shri chaitanya mahaprabhu also said that in this in these commentaries of you know adi shankara acharya many times the direct meaning of a term is not taken and the indirect meaning of a term is taken so these are very you know uh, approximate terms which i am use, using the exact terms is abhidha vritti and lakshana vritti so please pay close attention i am trying to explain what is abhidha vritti and what is lakshana vritti what is abhidha vritti first and foremost vritti means you know it's a shabda shakti how do we understand the meaning of a phrase or how do we understand the meaning of a term what is the exact meaning of a term so a term sometimes expresses its meaning through abhidha through direct interpretation in sahitya darpan of shri vishwanath kaviraj it is said tatra sanketitarthasya bodhanat agrima abhidha abhidha is agrima the primary means of understanding the meaning of a word or a phrase why because sanketit arthasya bodhanat it immediately gives the intended meaning you don't need any other interpretation for example if i make a statement that parvate ghosha parvate means on top of a mountain ghosha a small village a hamlet so parvate ghosha on top of a village there is a hamlet so as soon as i say parvate ghosha the words themselves are very clear on top of a mountain there is a small hamlet no need for any other explanation abhidavritti the words make their own meaning clear by the direct interpretation that is abhidha vritti now this is the direct interpretation and this in, this style of interpretation is most helpful in understanding the vedas or vedanta according to chaitanya mahaprabhu but then there is also something known as lakshana vritti lakshana means to give another indirect meaning when the direct meaning is not possible so in the same literature sahitya darpan Shri Vishwanath Kaviraj says 
मुख्यार्थबाधे तुक्त यथ प्रतीयते मुख्यार्थबाधे वेन द अभिधावृत्ति इज ऑब्स्ट्रक्टेड फॉर सम रीजन वेन अ फ्रेज और अ वर्ड के नॉट गिव एनी मीनिंग थ्रू डिरेक्ट इंटरप्रिटेशन तदयुक्त देन लक्षण इज प्रॉपर देन सेकेंडरी मीनिंग इज जस्टिफाइड या अन्य अर्थ प्रतीयते बिकॉज ऑफ लक्षण वृत्ति सम अदर सेकेंडरी मीनिंग कम्स आउट एग्जाम्पल फॉर एग्जाम्पल द फ्रेज गंगायाम घोष a hamlet on ganga now i want to ask a question so vinita gandharvika mate ji are you able to hear me hari krishna yes prabhu ji we can hear you prabhu yeah so if i say ganga i am ghosha a village on ganga what does it mean Oh my God, village on Ganga. So Ganga is pro- village is protected by Ganga. Prabhuji, I don't know. I I think in another way. A village I... on a village on Ganga. So can the village be situated directly on Ganga? No. So when we say village on Ganga, where is the village situated? Uh, I don't know. On Prabhuji. the banks of Ganga. Yes, so on the banks of Ganga. So <laughs> so. Since Mat, since Vinita Gandhi came at this, you tried, but no clear meaning was coming out. So through abhida vritti, through direct interpretation, you know, a meaning could not be derived. Therefore, Kirti Das Sundari Mataji, she derived a meaning through lakshana vritti. That is, she derived a meaning through secondary interpretation. But this secondary interpretation is only when mukhyartha badha, when the primary meaning is obstructed. But in many cases, in Sri Adi Shankar Acharya's commentary, instead of taking abhidha vritti, he has interpreted it through lakshana vritti. So, in many such cases, such as uh, when he is interpreting Mahavakya, Tattva Masi, etc., instead of taking abhidha vritti, because Tattva Masi, there is a clear di- distinction between Tatt and Tvam, Tatt Padarth and Tvam Padarth. They have been clearly you know distinguished tat is brahma brahma is sarvagya and tvam tvam is jiva jiva is not sarvagya a sarvagya so there is clear distinction between jiva and brahma but tat tvam asi shri adi shankar acharya has instead of giving the direct meaning through abhidha vritti he has taken help of lakshana vritti so in this way Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu does not like this style of interpretation. He says, "I am not happy with this," and therefore, Vedas are self-explanatory. You don't need to give a secondary interpretation of the Vedas or the Vedanta in order to explain your philosophy. Therefore, as I said, Bhaskara Chary also was not happy. Bhaskara Chary also said some the meaning has been covered, shrouded. Samvritya, Sutra Abhipraya Samvritya. Bhaskara Chary clearly says the meaning has been shrouded. so similarly i'll give another you know example uh, all of us must have seen ishopanishad so in ishopanishad commentary you know ishopanishad there is a verse isha vasya idam sarvam yat kincham jagatyam jagat tena tyaktena bhunjitha ma gridas kasya sviddhanam so tena tyaktena bhunjitha tena tyaktena whatever ishwar has left aside for us bhunjitha you consume and enjoy only that this is the direct meaning but adi shankara acharya he says adi shankara acharya says bhunjitha means palayetha preserve so tyaktena adi shankara acharya takes the meaning of tyaktena as tyagena so you renounce everything and bhunjitha after renouncing the world preserve yourself your soul by renunciation so that is how he interprets tena tyaktena bhunjitha bhunjitha he interprets as palayetha but according to sanskrit grammar bhunjitha is atmane pad vidhiling and in atmane pad the verbal root bhuj means to enjoy to consume but in parasmai pad the same verbal root bhuj means to preserve 
So the term is used in Atmanevar, but the meaning which Adi Shankaracharya has given is according to the verbal root in Parasmaipad. So this is another style of interpretation which many commentators don't like. Srila Baldev Vidya Bhushan in his Ishopanishad commentary, he is grammatically very correctly interprets Bunjitha as Bhogan Anubhavehe, experience the delights. Only those delights which have been kept aside for you by Ishwar. So in this way, this direct interpretation is very nice. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu also said that, you know, actually there are four, praman, four main pramanas for understanding what is the absolute truth. One is Pratyaksh Praman, direct sense perception. Second is Anuman Praman. Anuman means, you know, logical inference. Third is Aitiya Praman. Aitiya means some historical evidence is there or some history, some people say that it was like this historically. Some historical tradition is there, Aitiya. And fourth is Shabda Praman. Shabda Praman is the verbal testimony of the Vedas. So traditionally, Vedas, they accept Shabda Praman as the topmost Praman. So according to Shabda Praman, not according to logic, according to Shabda Praman, if you try to understand what is the subject matter of the Upanishads and Vedanta, the subject matter of Upanishads and Vedanta is Brahma. What is Brahma? The term Brahma need not be explained by any other Shastra or any other logic. Shastra itself explains what is Brahma. So Brahma is explained in the Puranas by Vyasadeva himself. So what is the need of going elsewhere? Vyasadeva's own definition can be taken as the meaning of Brahma. So I will share this definition of Brahma, which Vyasadeva has given in Shastra. In Vishnu Puran, Vyasadeva says, Brihatvat Brahmanatvacha Yat Brahma Paramam Vidhu. So Vyasadeva says, Brihatvat Brahma himself is, you know, he is expansive, he is all pervasive, Brahmanatvacha, and he also expands other things. Therefore, from the Brindhatu, this Brahma term has come about. So, very simple definition. That Brahma itself is all expansive and it also expands other. Now, when it's a, it ex, it also Brahmanatvat, it also causes the expansion of other things. It also causes the expansion of the material world. It's a clear indication that Brahma has Shakti. Because unless Brahma has Shakti, how can Brahma cause the expansion of something else? And it also indicates that there is something else existing besides Brahman. <laughs> Otherwise, Vyasadeva would have simply said, Brihatvat Brahma Vidu. That because he is all expansive, because it is all expansive, all pervading, therefore it is Brahman. Not only is it all pervading and all expansive, it also causes the expansion of other entities, such as the universe. So, which means that Brahma has some Shakti within it. And since Brahma has some Shakti within it, this Shakti should be accepted. But this Shakti is not accepted by the followers of the Advaita school. Even though there are many statements in the Upanishads which directly say that Brahma has Shakti. For example, in the Shvetashvatar Upanishad 6.8, it is said, Parasya Shakti Rivibhidhaiva Shruyate Swabhaviki Gyana Balakriyachal Asya Parashakti Rivibhidhaiva Shruyate Of this supreme truth, there are many para shaktis, there are many transcendental potencies. Swabhaviki, they are natural to him. Jnana, Bala, Kriyacha. There is Gyan Shakti, the potency of knowledge. Bala Shakti, the potency of activity, a potency of strength. Kriya, the potency of activity. So all these potencies are naturally, naturally present within that supreme truth. But those who are belonging to the Advaita school do not accept the existence of eternal shaktis of this Supreme Brahma. Therefore, since they do not accept the existence of Brahma Shakti, therefore, you know, their interpretation is not very much according to the Vedic version. This is the clear opinion of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu.
Now, it is true that you know, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu also said, it's true that many places in the Vedas, he is described as impersonal or he is described without any features, without any form, arupaha, asparshaha, or you know, without any gandha, without any rupa, without any form, without any touch, without any taste, without any smell. But those are shrutis which give abhed meaning, which describe the absolute truth in an impersonal way. But there are also shrutis which define the, imperson- the absolute truth in a personal way. And then there are also shrutis which define the absolute truth in both ways. And this, these shrutis which harmonize the abheda and the bheda shrutis, these shrutis are very important. We should understand these shrutis. We should understand these ved vakyas in order to understand what is the real nature of the absolute truth. Otherwise, we will simply become absorbed in abhed vakyas or those statements which are, you know, simply saying that the absolute truth is impersonal. And we will start, you know, keeping a distance from those shrutis which are propounding bheda or distinction. So we should not have that bias. So there is a very nice Shruti, uh, Shruti Vakya in the Shvetashvata Upanishad. And Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu quoted this. Apani Pado Javano Grahitang Pashatya Chakshu Sashranotya Karana Saveti Vedyam Nachatasyasti Vedyam Tamahura Griyam Purusham Mahantam Apani Pado. This is known as Apani Pad Shruti. All the Acharyas, they call this Apani Pad Shruti. This section of Shweta Ashtatar Upanishad. This verse is known as Apani Pad Shruti. Apani Pado. He is without Pani hands and without legs. But Jabano, you know, very fast, moves very fast. Grahita, he grabs everything. So he doesn't have legs or hands, but he moves very fast and he grabs everything. Pashyati, he looks everywhere, but Achakshu, he is without eyes. Sa Shrinoti, he hears, but Akarnaha, but he has no ears. Sa Vetti Vedyam, whatever is to be known in this world, Vedyam, Sa Vetti, he knows. But there is nobody who knows him. Tam Ahur Agriyam. The Shrutis call him the topmost Purusham Mahantam. The greatest Purusha, the Supreme Purusha. So see the same Shruti. In the single Shruti, there is Bheda Vakya and Abheda Vakya. There is impersonalism and personalism. Both. There is Nirvisheshvad and Savisheshvad. Both in the same Shruti given. He has no ears but he hears. You know, he has no hands and feet, but he moves around fast and he grabs everything. So, a harmonization is needed. And therefore, instead of sticking only to the Abhed Shrutis, the Shrutis which propound non-distinction or impersonalism, one should harmonize the Shrutis. So, the real meaning of this Shruti is that Bhagavan doesn't have material hands and material legs. And therefore, because he has transcendental hands and legs, just like Arjun said in the Bhagavad Gita, Sarvatrapani Padante. Everywhere are your hands and feet. <laughs> so, you know, how did Arjuna see everywhere his hands and feet if he is Apani Pad? So Arjuna saw everywhere his hands and feet, although he is Apani Pad, because his Pani and his Pad, his hands and his legs are not material. Arjun saw them only after he was given a vision of that transcendental form. So, he has transcendental hands and legs. And by these transcendental hands and legs, he moves fast and he grabs everything. He sees everything, although he has no material eyes. He hears everything, although he has no material ears. He knows everything, but nobody knows him. He is known as the Agram Purusham Mahantam. He is known as the great original supreme personality of Godhead. So, dear devotees, this is the meaning of Apani Pad Shruti. And this meaning of Apani Shruti should be understood correctly by all the Vaishnavas. Actually, in other Shrutis, it is very clearly said that he has eyes, he has ears. Sri Jiva Goswami, in his Sandarbhas, he points out those Shrutis. 
जीव गोस्वामी से जिन बृहदारण्य को उपनिषद प्राण से प्राण मुत चक्षुषुर ही इज द प्राण ऑफ प्राण ही इज द लाइफ ऑफ लाइफ चक्षुष चक्षुर ही इज द आई ऑफ द आई तो ही इज द आई बिहाइंड द आईज ऑफ ऑल द लिविंग एंटिटीज ही इज द लाइफ फोर्स बिहाइंड ऑल लाइफ फोर्सेस द इतरे उपनिषद ही इट इज सेड सत at the beginning of creation he glanced if he glanced means how can he glance if he doesn't have eyes therefore he has transcendental eyes krishna also confirms this brahman ho pratishtha ho actually the impersonal brahman is resting upon me i am the pratishtha i am the foundation of the impersonal brahman so in this way all the shrutis can be harmonized but when all these shrutis are harmonized properly then only one can understand the true meanings of the vedas and vedanta sutra and what sarvabhoom bhattacharya was explaining to chaitanya mahaprabhu chaitanya mahaprabhu said i cannot understand what you are explaining it appears to be one sided explanation so at the end of the chapter chapter 24 shopad mentions that actually everywhere vede ramayane chaiva purane bharate tatha आदा वंते च मध्य च हरि सर्वत्र गीयते वेदे रामायणे चैव इन द वेदस इन द रामायण पुराणे भारते तथा इन ऑल द पुराणस इन महाभारत आदाव एट द बिगिनिंग अंते एट द एंड च मध्य च एंड इन द मिडल इन ऑल प्लेसेस हरि ही सर्वत्र गीयते इट इज हरि हु इज बीइंग ग्लोरीफाइड हरि इज द ऑब्जेक्ट ऑफ टू बी अंडरस्टूड बाय द वेदस इट इज क्लियरली सेड वेदस च सर्वैर अहमेव वेद्यो इन भगवत गीता ही हैज सेड i am to be known by all the vedas then why to deny his personality take the direct meaning of the bhagavad gita vakya of the meaning of the statement of bhagavad gita and don't construe a, a meaning through lakshana vritti through indirect word power take the direct word power take the direct meaning so shri chaitanya mahaprabhu therefore said that actually the best way to understand the vedas is to take help of the puranas what is explained in a difficult way parokshavad in vedas is explained in a simple way in the puranas and the divider of the vedas vyasadev and the author of the puranas is also vyasadev so he is the perfect commentator on the vedas and vyasadev he has given perfect conclusion to all the vedas and vedanta in the puranas so we should understand the vedas through the puranas now sarvabhoom bhattacharya was explaining that ultimately jiva and brahma are one you see this is the philosophy of advaitavad what is the philosophy of advaitavad the philosophy of advaitavad is that currently it appears that the jiva is distinct currently it appears that all of our jivas we are distinct from each other so i am a jiva and let's say you know all of you who are attending are also jivas and you are having an experience and i am also having an experience of life but this is only vyavaharik satya vyavaharik satya means this is only reality which is not absolute only you know you can say reality for the time being parmarthik satya the ultimate reality is that neither i exist nor you exist nothing exists we are all brahma so this is the advaitavad philosophy and this extreme you know non difference between jiva and brahma this chaitanya mahaprabhu did not like because chaitanya mahaprabhu said that in the vishnu puran vyasadev himself has said that jiva is an eternal potency of bhagwan and he pointed out this verse from the vishnu puran vishnu shakti para prakta kshetra gyakhya tatha para avidya karma samgyanya tritiya shakti rishyate so vishnu shakti hi para prakta vishnu's energy there are three types first is para the transcendental antaranga shakti or the internal potency second is kshetra gyakhya Another potency is which is known as Kshetragya or the Jiva, living entity, the Thapara. That living entity is also his superior energy. Third is Avidya Karma Samgyanya, 
and the third one is avidya karma which is material potency tritiya shakti rishyate this is his third potency so there are three eternal potencies of vishnu clearly established in vishnu purana para shakti kshetra gyakya shakti avidya karma shakti and there are three shaktis established in vishnu purana why are you saying that the kshetragya shakti merges with the absolute truth it is incorrect to say like that jeeva is eternal shakti bhagavad gita also says mamai vamsho jeeva loke jeeva bhuta sanatana sanatana my living it is are my eternal parts and parts so why are you saying that uh, ultimately the living entity merges with brahma and the living entity's existence is over that is incorrect yaya kshetragya shakti hi sa veshtita andrpa sarvaga yaya kshetragya shakti hi so by this third energy by this avidya shakti by this maya shakti what happens kshetragya shakti the jeeva shakti veshtita it becomes covered so the jeevas become covered by maya sarvaga and they go everywhere around the universe samsara tapan akhilan avapnoti atra santata and they suffer miseries after miseries in the material world as they wander around <clears throat> so it is very clear that jeeva is an eternal potency of vishnu and because jeeva is an eternal potency there is no time at which the jeeva will lose its existence into brahma so this jeeva brahma aikyavad the merging of jeeva and brahma is philosophy is absolutely disliked by the vaishnava acharyas so this is what chaitanya mahaprabhu also had to say to sri sarvabhoom bhattacharya moving ahead sri chaitanya mahaprabhu also pointed out that there is also a shruti mundak upanishad and in mundak upanishad there is the shruti which speaks about the two birds on the tree dwasu parna sayuja sakhaya samanam vriksham parishashva jate तयोरण्य पिपल स्वाद्वत्तीनो विचाकृषि द्वासुपर्ण दू बर्ड्स सयुजा सखाया सामन टू फ्रेंड्स सिटिंग ऑन द सेम ट्री तयोरण्य पिपल स्वादी स्वाद्वत्ती वन ऑफ देम इज ईटिंग द फ्रूट्स ऑफ द पीपल ट्री एंड अनश्न and the second one is not eating anyo abhichakshipi but simply witnessing so this shruti itself says that there are two birds why would the shruti make a statement of ignorance the shruti will always speak the absolute truth so there is always eternal difference between jeev and parmatma in this way chaitanya mahaprabhu explained to sarvabhoom bhattacharya actually according to vedic instructions mahaprabhu said that bhagwan has a transcendental form bhagwan has a shakti swarup shakti that swarup shakti makes up his swarup it is what makes up his form but this advaitvadis their conception is that it just the opposite maya va chinnam chaitanyam ishwaram that actually this bhagwan krishna and ram are nothing but covered by maya his own maya so this is incorrect actually no bhagwan's form is not a transformation of material modes it's not a vikar of maya it's not maya vikar so chaitanya mahaprabhu did not stop there he said actually anybody who doesn't accept the form of the lord should be considered as a nastik anybody who doesn't accept the eternality of the vapu sharir of the lord should be considered as a nastik you know the buddhists don't accept that the supreme lord takes a spiritual form the buddhists deny the vedas themselves and therefore we clearly label chaitanya mahaprabhu said we clearly label buddhists as nastiks atheists but the advaitvadis they say they say we accept the vedas but after accepting the vedas they deny the lord so that's much more dangerous because buddhists clearly reject the vedas so it's clear to identify them and say they are you are not non vedic you are atheist but the advaitvadis they appear vedic and then they are propagating a philosophy which is you know prachanna bauddhatva which is covered buddhism this is incorrect it is more dangerous than buddhism chaitanya mahaprabhu also said the most dangerous thing is 
that in Adi Shankaracharya's commentary on the Vedanta Sutra, which you were speaking, an indirect allegation is made on Vyasadeva. What is the indirect allegation? That Vyasadeva himself is Bhranta. He does not understand, you know, he is he is himself made a mistake in writing the sutras. Whereas Adi Shankaracharya said that. So I will point this out. Chaitanya is not there in the discussion in Chaitanya Charitamrita, but it has been pointed out by various senior Gaudiya Vaishnavas. And I will share this. In uh, Vedanta Sutra 1426, the Sutra is Atma Krithe So <coughs> Adi Shankaracharya says that, you know, Brahma is the Karan, Brahma is the cause of the universe and the Karya, the universe is also Brahma. So Brahma is the cause and Brahma is the effect. So how did the cause become the effect? So Adi Shankaracharya says, Parinamat iti Brahmaha, because Brahman transformed itself into material creation. So this is known as Brahma Parinamvad. Please try to understand. This is known as Brahma Parinamvad. That Brahma is the cause of the universe. The impersonal Brahman, which has no form, no features, no nothing. But from the impersonal, it transformed itself into the universe, which has a form, name, etc. So this is Brahma Parinamvad. Because the Sutra says Atma Kriteh Parinamat. So the Sutra itself says Parinamat. Vyasdeva has said Parinamat because of transformation. Later, in commentary to 2.114, Adi Shankaracharya says, Nahi ekasya Brahmana Parinama Dharmatvam. The Brahman is a single entity and it does not have Parinam. It does not have the capability. It does not have the Dharma or it does not have the nature of transforming itself. But earlier you said Parinama Diti Brahma. Brahman transforms itself. Now you are saying Brahman doesn't transform itself. What's going on? So Adi Shankaracharya says, well, actually, try to understand now. Brahma only appears to transform itself into the material world. The material world is not factual. It's like a dream. It's unreal. So what you see here is all false. So Brahman has not transformed. It is vivarta. It is a semblance of transformation. It's not actual transformation. The universe is unreal. Therefore, Brahman has not transformed. It only appears to transform. But Vyasthev said Parinamat. But in this way, indirectly, by saying that although Vyasadev has said Parinamat, but Brahma does not undergo Parinam. Adi Shankaracharya has indirectly said that Vyasadev has written something, you know, erroneous in the Sutra. Therefore, Vyasa Bharanta Boli. By saying like this, you are indirectly saying that Vyasa is Bharanta. Vyasa Dev is mistaken in his in writing his sutras. So the actual philosophy is Shakti Parinamvat. Dear devotees, the actual philosophy is Shakti Parinamvat. The Vaishnava Acharya is explained. When Vyasadev says Atma Kritahe Parinamat, that how did Brahman is the cause and you know, how is it that the material world was created from him? Did Brahman transform himself, Parinam? So the Vaishnava Acharya also says Brahman doesn't transform itself. So Brahma has his Shakti. That Shakti, material energy transforms itself into the material world. Brahma remains untouched. So Brahma is, you know, Brahma is nothing but Bhagavan, Parabrahma. Parabrahma has his Vividhaiva Shakti, Shakti, many Shaktis he has. And out of which the Apara Shakti, the Maya Shakti, she transforms herself into the material world. This is Shakti Parinamvad. So by this, doing this, the Veda, the Vaishnava commentators preserve the words of Vyasadev without going against the words of Vyasadev. So it's not like earlier you accept Parinamvad and later you reject Parinamvad. Sorry, no, that's not the way of interpretation of Vedanta Sutra. Vedanta Sutra doesn't require this Dravidi Prana, you know. It, you, you know, in order to eat, you, instead of eating directly, you eat like this. You, Vedanta Sutra doesn't require this. 
earlier you say brahman transforms has parinam later you say brahman doesn't have parinam this is not required shakti parinam vad is the actual meaning of the vedanta sutras and in this is way this is the way in which vyasadev's word should be interpreted so <laughs> this is what chaitanya mahaprabhu was saying so chaitanya mahaprabhu said actually all the vedas have emanated from the original sound vibration pranav omkar so all the vedas are contained in the seed pranav and from the seed all the vedas have come about and all these you know statements of vedas which you misinterpret such as tatvam asi these are also come from that same vedas and you should not misinterpret these statements actually tatvam asi can have many meanings and if we see from the madhvacharya school point of view tatvam asi can have many meanings and all these meanings are <coughs> uh, favorable to bhakti favorable to difference between the jiva and brahma so if we take tat tat as sarva vibhaktik sarva vibhaktik means it can have all declensions so what is the meaning of tatva masi tatva masi we can take on the those who understand grammar little bit and dvitiya vibhakti tatva masi unto him you are surrendered we can take it tritiya vibhakti third declension there are total seven declensions tena tatva masi along with him you are always you are always with him with him with uh, whom with the super soul you can take chaturthi vibhakti sampradana and what does it mean it means tasmai tvam asi you are for him for his service now you can take panchami vibhakti ablative tasmat tvam asi you appeared in this world from him because before the world was created everybody was within mahavishnu's body tasmat tvam asi you can take shashti vibhakti you know genitive declension tasya tvam asi you are his servant you can take saptami vibhakti locative declension tasmin tvam asi you are dependent on him so many meanings of tatvam asi you are only taking one meaning and that too tat and tvam are two separate terms in the very shruti in the very words of the vedas tat and tvam have been differentiated so it is you know it is incorrect to take that meaning tatva masi means you are directly that jiva is brahma it is incorrect to say like that if tatva masi if you are that then who is teaching whom this statement if you are already that then who is the teacher and who is the taught so then you require dravidi prana you require to eat like this in order to explain all those things so then don't do like that <laughs> so chetani mahaprabhu said actually this mayavadi explanations they are faulty and because they don't the reason why they are faulty is because mayavadis don't accept the eternal transcendental form of the lord yenya ravindaksh vimukta maninas prayasta bhava avishuddha buddhaya आरूय कृत्सेण परम पदम पतंत्युष्मुद्ध बुद्धिजेंस इज फॉल्टी दे डोंट एंगेज इन डिवोशनल सर्विस दिस पार्ट ऑफ मायावाद कैन नेवर लीड टू एक्चुअल रियलाइजेशन एक्चुअली द डिवोटीज आर ऑलवेज इन डिसग्रीमेंट विथ मायावादी फिलोसफर्स मायावादी फिलोसफर्स दे गुड एट वर्ड जेगलरी इंस्टेड ऑफ टेकिंग अभिधावृत्ति टेक लक्षणावृत्ति एंड गिव सम कंस्ट्रीव्ड मीनिंग You see, there is nothing incorrect in taking indirect meanings, but those indirect meanings should glorify the Lord. Indirect meanings are good; they are good when they are when they are used to glorify the Lord. See, there is a devotee boy at Hari Suri. He takes all the secondary meanings of a word, but all those meanings are for glorifying Krishna Lila. So, uh, it's very nice to take secondary meanings instead of taking the direct meaning. But word jugglery is good if it is used in the service of Krishna. it's very good when it is used in the service of krishna but it's not good when it is used to deny the form of bhagwan so the actual philosophy of vedanta sutra is shakti parinam vat and this was the message which chaitanya mahaprabhu gave to shri sarvabhaum bhattacharya so the devotees in this way two chapters have been covered by me somehow 
I think Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was merciful that I could cover these two chapters. I am once again very thankful to Vinita Gandharvika Mataji, Kirti Dasundari Mataji. Thank you so much for explaining Lakshana Vritti meaning. Thank you everybody else for kindly being present here. Yadatra Skaritam Kinchit Vidvam Sahapura Yantutat. Yadatra Saushtavam Kinchit Tat Guru Reva Menahi. Yadatra Skaritam Kinchit. Whatever was mistaken, Vidvam Sahapura Yantutat. You are all learned Vidvans. Please correct it. Yadatra Saushtavam Kinchit. Whatever was nice in the presentation. Tad Guru Reva. It belongs to my Guru Janas. Me Nahi doesn't belong to me. Thank you very much, dear devotees. Jagat Guru Shri Vatra Upa. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Prabhu, thank you so much. What a wonderful class. It was so exciting to hear from you. I really love the way you explained the uh, Tattva Masi. And also how you pointed out the, uh, the verse on the two birds. So that shows that definitely uh, the Supreme Lord and the Jiva are different. So from the Shruti's itself. Thank you so much, Prabhu. Very beautiful explanations. Um, I had one question um, uh, from the beginning of the class. Uh, so you did, yeah, you did mention that uh, Sandeepani Muni was uh, specifically, you said shy white. So right. I was a little curious to understand because generally Shaivism, we understand is not purely Vedantic, right? If I'm not wrong, uh, generally, uh, so how is it that at the time of Krishna, uh, even Shaivism as a philosophy even existed? No, no the, all the schools of Vedas are always existing. Shaiva, uh, Shakta, Saura, uh, Ganapata, and uh, Vaishnav. These are all bona fide schools of Vedas. So some worship Ganesh, so some worship Shiv, some worship Shakti, some worship uh, uh, Surya, some worship Vishnu. But Yagya Vai Vishnu, actually Vishnu is the real meaning of the Vedas. Even if we have heard so many times, the sages also have a discussion ke, Baba, who is the topmost supreme personality and Bhrigu Muni goes and does that. Which means this entire thing has been going on since time in memory. Okay. So this, this, yes, please. Yeah, yeah. So my, uh, so that means that uh, so such uh, conceptions were there, but they might have not been. Uh, I don't know if I'm saying it right because what I understood is that either you have the Vaishnava school of thought, like after a person has written commentaries on Vedanta Sutras, trying to establish who is God. Uh, so you have the Vaishnava school of thought as well as the Advaitic, you know, point of view, which is very popular. Uh, but uh, can you really establish uh, that uh, Lord Shiva is the supreme, I mean, meaning the Shaivite thought, um, school of thought, was it like that? Or is, I mean, was it prevalent like that? Or <coughs> it was just that, uh, you know, the worship of Lord Shiva, like how you explain the worship of Lord Shiva, the worship of Lord Ganesh was prevalent. So he was a worshipper of Lord Shiva. Am yeah, I getting yeah, it yeah. right? Okay. Yeah, okay. yeah. So the thing is, those who have studied Vedanta Sutra, so amongst them, the understanding is very clear that Vishnu is supreme. But still there have been some philosophers uh, like there is uh, <clears throat> I don't know if you have heard this name Appaya Dikshit in southern India. Yes, yes, very much. Yeah, Appaya Dikshit. Yes. Yes. So he he was Shiv Advaitavad. <laughs> That's the philosophy. So right. so some, some, some people have been there like that but they are not the majority. Majority okay. of the Vedanta Interpreters are Vaishnav, and ah. that proves that proves that that is the most prominent way of interpreting the Vedanta Sutra. But okay. why I said that Sandipani Muni is a <clears throat> Shaiva is because uh, in Gopal Champu Jiva Goswami says that uh, you know uh, uh, Krishna wanted to go and study, but if Krishna goes to a Vaishnav Guru, then Guru will become disciple and Krishna will become Guru. <laughs> That's what will. Oh, <laughs> <Haribo>. <laughs> very interesting. Very, very so, nice. <laughs> so you, should, you should have a guru who is who is Vaidik, Pakka Vaidik, uh, but uh, non Vaishnav for the sake of uh, uh, nourishing the Leela. So, therefore, uh, Krishna selected a Shaiva Guru, Sandipani Muni. Okay. Uh, 
ಸೇಡಿನ್ ಗೋಪಾಲ್ ಜಂಪ್ ಓ ವಂಡರ್ಫುಲ್ ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ ಯು ವೆರಿ ನೈಸ್ ಕ್ಲಾಸ್ ಪ್ರಭು ರಿಯಲಿ ರಿಲಿಶ್ ದಿಸ್ ಕ್ಲಾಸ್ ಸೋ ಮಚ್ ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ ಯು ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ ಯು ಹರಿ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರಿ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಪ್ರಭು ಜಿ ವಾಟ್ ಅ ಬ್ರಿಲಿಯಂಟ್ ಕ್ಲಾಸ್ ಐ ನೋ ಯು ಓನ್ಲಿ ಯು ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಡು ಜಸ್ಟಸ್ ಟು ಸಚ್ ಕ್ಲಾಸಸ್ it was really awesome so prabhu the last thing that you expert about tam tattvam asi and you were telling about telling about the second vibhakti and third vibhakti till seventh so this fourth vibhakti is tasmay tam asi right like uh, you are for him for un, un, unke unke liye aapko you are for him so uh, is this the vibhakti that was used by gajendra in his entire moksha Yes, yes, yes. Along with Namaha, all Chaturthi Vibhakti is used. Yeah, that's what I was saying because you were saying Krishna, yeah. Like, mm-hmm. like, so it was Krishna. Chaturthi. Yeah, even in that, that prayer, Krishna, Kunti Maharani, Krishna, Vasudevaya, Devaki, Nanda, Naya, Cha, Nanda, Gopa, Kumaraya, Govindaya, Namo, Namaha. So there's a rule in Panini uh, that along with Namaha, Swasti, uh, uh, all these terms, you have to use Chaturthi Vibhakti. ಗಣೇಶಾಯ ನಮಃ ನಮಃ ಶಿವಾಯ ಓಂ ನಮೋ ಭಗವತೆ ವಾಸುದೇವಾಯ ಆಲ್ ದೀಸ್ ಆರ್ ಚತುರ್ಥಿ ವಿಭಕ್ತಿಸ್ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ನಮಃ ಈಸ್ ಪ್ರೆಸೆಂಟ್ ಆಸ್ ಅನ್ ಉಪಪದ ಆಸ್ ಅ ನಿಯರ್ ಬೈ ಟರ್ಮ್ ಓಕೆ ಸೊ ದಿಸ್ ಇಸ್ ಆಲ್ ಇನ್ ಚತುರ್ಥಿ ವಿಭಕ್ತಿ ಎಸ್ ಓಂ ನಮೋ ಭಗವತೆ ವಾಸುದೇವಾಯ ವಾಸುದೇವಾಯ ಇಸ್ ವಿಚ್ ವಿಭಕ್ತಿ ಫೋರ್ತ್ ಫೋರ್ತ್ ವಿಭಕ್ತಿ ನಮಃ ಶಿವಾಯ ಶಿವಾಯ ಇಸ್ ವಿಚ್ ವಿಭಕ್ತಿ ಯಾ ಸೊ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಆಲ್ ಇನ್ ಫೋರ್ತ್ ಯಾ Okay. Thank you, Prabhu. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> it's, it's really, really, I'll, I'll just again reiterate my point that only you can do justice. Nobody else could have done justice to these chapters. So we are really looking forward for tomorrow's session, Prabhu. It was brilliant. Thank you, Prabhu. Thank you. Thank you, thank you so I request devotees. Okay, they have already raised their hands. Okay. Anuradha Mahalaji can go ahead. And before, you know, she all posted one question. that is it abhira or abhida vritti what's the right term abhidha abhidha i will type it out in the chat right. box uh, so that it is clear the name of the vritti is i have typed abhidha thank you prabhu yes anuradha mata ji please go ahead thank you mata ji thank you prabhu ji i was confused so that was my one question thank you so much prabhu ji such a it is a very intellectual class and fool like me it's very difficult to grasp but still i set through whatever i could grasp so now all you followers of chaitanya mahaprabhu just say i am fool i am fool but you understand everything there you am i caught all of you i understand your trickery you all say i am fool i am fool like chaitanya mahaprabhu but you understand much more than the speaker isn't that the fact no problem <laughs> that's not for ma prabhu is the lord himself i am the servant so, or trying to be at least so prabhu my second question is it's a very naive question, uh, question and though you have such a such a wonderful class but i still when i hear this vedanta and then vedanta sutra what is the difference prabhu actually uh, veda refers to the uh, the four samhitas rig sam yajur and atharva and at the conclusion of the conclusion of these four vedas is ved ant vedasya ant so what is at the end of the vedas is upanishads and when the when a discussion on the upanishads and the conclusion of so the main conclusions of the upanishads are presented in the form of sutras they are known as vedanta sutras so vedanta in general refers to uttar mimamsa upanishad bhag upanishad section of the vedas and uh, uh, vedanta sutra refers to the specific sutras written by vyasadev in which various topics from the upanishads have been taken doubts have been raised and the doubts have been resolved so that is vedanta sutra so i hope that clarifies yeah so vedanta then upanishads and then vedanta sutra if i have to put them yeah 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 vedanta mainly refers Essence to upanishads yeah. okay 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 so and puranas and other stories they are all completely different like supporting things like that puranas are they are considered to be smriti mainly but okay. in you know smriti they are 
considered different from shruti they are considered to be smriti okay okay yeah thank you thank you and really really like the point towards when you concluded saying even the secondary interpretation like a yukta vairagya uh it can also be used if it is i mean it is also wonderful if it is used for glorifying krishna that was such a such a wonderful point thank you so much that is the uh, the conclusion for all the chapters that i have been hearing from all the wonderful speakers prabhu thank you so much for that wonderful prabhu thank you hari krishna dandavat thank you sir hari krishna thank you prabhu ji okay suksagri mati ji you can go ahead Hare Krishna Prabhu ji Dhanwat pranams a very beautiful class Prabhu ji like others mentioned i have about three questions and um one is a direct one from your class you were explaining the uh, shankara uh, you know um, uh, method or uh, interpreting interpreting the uh, ishavashyamidam sarvam shloka and uh, you said that they um, you know he refers to tyaktena as you know uh, after you have given up this material body right if i understand no, after you. after you have after you have accepted after you have given up enjoyment sense enjoyment after you have given up tyagena after renunciation not after giving up material body after renunciation bunjita mm-hmm. uh, bunjita he takes a completely different meaning as palayetha mm-hmm. uh, preserve yourself Okay. But instead, the main direct meaning is tena tek tena bunjita means whatever is left by him for you, enjoy that. Mm-hmm. That that is the meaning of you know tena tek tena bunjita. But the to uh, you know to take the meaning of bunjita as palayetha is also grammatically not correct. Because according to Panini's grammar, uh, according to Dhatu part, uh, mm-hmm. to uh, take the bhuj dhatu, uh, which is in Atmane pad. The Atmane Pad meaning is not uh, uh, Palan. The Atmane Pad is to enjoy. The Atmane Pad meaning is to enjoy. Bhog. But he has taken the Parasmai Pad meaning into the Atmane Pad. And that is what has created the confusion. And this uh, later Vaishnava commentators have pointed out. Shri sure, Prabhu, um, the other part which you mentioned, the technical terms kind of went over my head anyways. But uh, I was just wondering... Uh, uh, there you know how did he tend to interpret tena there because we are um, you know interpreting it as a uh, him right like whatever is provided by krishna and it refer- refers to krishna there but how did they interpret tena there then if uh, oh, i mean who is it referring to tena tek tena who has tena refers to tek tena tek tena renunciation by that renunciation tena tek tena by that renunciation oh okay Okay, sure. See, mm-hmm. jagatyam jagat. The entire world is pervaded by mm-hmm. by Ishwar, or mm-hmm. according to Adi Shankaracharya, by Brahma. Knowing this fact, tena tyaktena, huh? mm-hmm. therefore by that, by this re- understanding, of, renounce everything and bunjitha, maintain yourself. That is his interpretation of the verse. I hope mm-hmm. you are able to understand. Yes, yes Prabhu, I understood this part. Thank you so much, Prabhuji. Um, uh, ಸರ್ವಿಸ್ಟಿಂಗ್ಸ್ಟ್ರೆಸ್ಟ್ರೆಸ್ಟ್ರೆಸ್ಟ್ರೆಸ್ಟ್ರೆಸ್ಟ್
uh, it's not something theoretical. People have undergone, people, those who were impersonalists throughout their lives, at the very fag end of their lives, they have started saying that we, this was this conception we don't like, we, then something was missing in this conception. Uh, do you read Hindi, Mataji? Yes, Prabhuji. Okay, so I want to show you one article uh -huh. which was written by one Swami, his name was Swami Ram Subdas. Swami Ram Subdas, for his entire life, he followed Advait Vedanta. He followed this impersonal path of, uh, <clears throat> you know, impersonal path of uh, realization. And then after following this entire impersonal path of realization, uh, Swami Ram Subdas, his commentary on Bhagavad Gita is very famous, if you might have heard. So he wrote an article. Can you see the title of the article, Mataji? Yeah, Adhunik Vedanta. Vedant, Adunik Vedant. Mm -hmm. uh, and see here what he is saying. Can you please read the sentence? See, this person at the end of his life is saying like this. <laughs> Sad. So, and not only that, at the very, there are some compiled lectures from him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, uh, uh, they keep see here what he's saying. Can you read? Yes, Prabhu, I can read. Abhi jo Vedanta ka prachar ho raha hai, usse, usse mein baathak maanta hoon. Vedanta ke granth padhoge to uljhan uh, ho jayege, par santon ki vani padhoge to nihal ho, uh, nihal ho jaoge. And at the end of at the end of all of this, see what he is, which verse he is speaking as conclusion. Yenya Ravindaksha Vimukta Maninas Twayas the Bhava the Vishuddha Buddhaya. Aruya Krishna Param Padantata Patanti Don Adratesh. At the end he is putting Shrivan Bhagavatam. Prabhuji, so, I didn't understand the before that line which I read, Prabhu. It says that Nihal Ho Jayage. What does that mean? I mean Santo yeah, you'll, you, you'll become you'll become the full complete in all ways. I thought it was like it would be like... See some other some other statements which is made in a lecture. I see. I see. Please read. Hmm. Sorry, I'm using the cell phone, so I'm kind of zooming in. Vedant Vedant Sauke Hue Vyakti Brahma Rakshas. Oh my god. Vedant Vyakti Brahma Rakshas. So yeah, this is you know. Below he says, Vichar Chandrodai, Vichar Sagar, Vritti Prabhaka, Tatvanu Sandhan, Atma Puran, Pustaka Karke, Behem Ujaga Kiam Bukto, Bilkul Juti Bate. In Grantoko Padnevalo, Messe Koi, Tatwake, Jivan Mukhuaho, Asamene, Egbi Vetini Dekai. They allowed him to come into my Vatak any more problem. <laughs> It's very, it's therefore Prabhupada used to say, and they come down and do some charity work. <laughs> they, they have to come back to the material world and do charity work because they can't find stability in that artificial platform of thinking themselves artificially equal to Brahma. Mm -hmm. Prabhuji, why, sorry if I'm taking too much time. Just one last question, Prabhuji. I was uh, just thinking if you can uh, throw some light on how, you know, once I was thrown this argument by one uh, Chinmaya mission lady who said that, you know, just as the sun uh, reflects in different uh, parts, you know, so that way we just assume, you know, that, you know, that the Brahman has different forms and we look at them in different ways. Um, like that, she was trying to give me that argument that basically yeah. that Ghatakash Patakash theory. So, how do Vaishnavas refute that, Prabhuji? This is known as Pratibhimbavad. And so, Jiva Goswami has taken up Pratibhimbavad uh, in Tattva Sandarbh. So, if you want to, if you have seen, if you have Tattva Sandarbh, you can see Pratibhimbavad. Pratibhimbavad means Brahma is Pratibhimba reflected in you know so many Jivas. So, that is known as Pratibhimbavad. <clears throat> the question is, if Brahma is reflected in so many parts, if Brahma is the original sun and we are all reflected in that. So, <coughs> the thing is, the, the reflection should have the exact same nature as the original. You know, if there is an eclipse on the original, the reflection should also get eclipsed. 
but the thing is you are saying brahma remains completely uneclipsed whereas the jiva becomes eclipsed so how can it be that the reflection becomes eclipsed but the original is always uneclipsed how is it possible and moreover this philosophy of pratibhimbavad where is it mentioned in the shrutis the most important question to ask is where is the praman for this in the shruti first we have to begin with that where is the direct praman in the upanishads of pratibhimbavad have you heard any statement where upanishads or vedas or veda any they are saying that uh, the jivas are like reflections in a part of the original sun is there any such statement in the shruti and by statement i i, I mean direct statement huh? not some indirect interpretation of some shruti a direct statement should be there i mean not from at least uh, the vaishnava literature i have read prabhuji this i'm not read too much of the mayavad literature so yeah so therefore it's very important to understand that these philosophies are based on more on uh, what do we say on um, extrapolations from the shrutis they are in hindi khichatan karke they have pulled some meaning out of it uh, some shruti so shruti should directly say but what does the shruti say that there are two birds on the tree one bird eats one bird watches where is the philosophy of reflection given in the shrutis so for this is what we have to ask praman should, every time we should ask shabda praman we should analyze the shabda praman and then we can come to a conclusion sure prabhu so you are saying that this kind of analogy which they give is uh, simply something based on concoction and not uh, it, it uh, yeah, every every analogy that you give should be based on a shruti on a direct ved vakya uh -huh. suppose i say i give you an analogy that uh, uh, this world is like the web of a spider and bhagwan is like a spider bhagwan creates the web bhagwan plays in the web and after playing in the web bhagwan eats up the web so what question will you ask me um what question in the sense prabhu ji i mean it just I mean, means that you... he creates he maintains and annihilates so, yeah but i'm comparing him to a spider so you know the first uh, question to be asked yeah in terms of the function yeah i am comparing him to a spider but the first question you should ask is <laughs> is it given anywhere in you know mm -hmm. the shastra this analogy okay yes Sorry. yes mm -hmm. so then it is my duty to tell you yes it is given in the shastra a very which which shastra it is given it's given in shrimad bhagavatam mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Can you please read the translation, Mataji? Three twenty one twenty three twenty one nineteen. Yes, Prabhu, my yeah, my dear Lord, you alone create the universes. O personality of Godhead, desiring to create these universes, you create them, maintain them, and again wind them up by your own energies, which are under the control of your second energy called Yoga Maya. Just as a spider creates a cobweb by its own energy and again winds it up. That's 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 how. Uh, Analogy should be mentioned in the direct shrutis. Sure, Prabhu Ji. And even uh, uh, like oh, the many analogies which we listen, you know, in Prabhupada's lectures and also uh, in uh, uh, Bhakti Siddhan Saraswati's, you know, the uh, uh, the the stories, the uh, kind of stories he wrote, Prabhu Upadesha Upakya, and I don't remember the name properly. So all those yes. are based on the scriptures, Prabhu Ji. Then uh, yes, like those are instructive mm -hmm. stories for instilling moral values. in or mm -hmm. some vaishnav values mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so for those things you can make some stories which are according to the shruti or smriti those were those stories were you know they were written by him mm -hmm. huh? but the thing is when it comes to tatva when it comes to siddhanta when it comes to absolute truth you can't use analogies or something like that unless they are rooted in the direct shastra i hope you are able to understand Sure, Prabhu. Yes. When it comes yeah. to other topics like how one should behave in the world, how one should conduct oneself in his varna and ashram, for that you can create a story like you did, Hitopadesh, Panchatantra. You can create those stories, no problem. Mm -hmm. 
those pandit the stories were also created by narayan pandit hitopadesh and panchatantra but the thing is when it comes to tatva siddhant you need razor blade accuracy uh-huh. and that accuracy can only come when it is directly mentioned in the shruti otherwise there is every scope of uh, skhalanam of falling down and making a mistake sure prabhu i get that so you're saying that um, you know something like for moral or how to uh, uh, you know practically uh, in silver virtues you can make your stories but for siddhanta and uh, for uh, you know uh, uh, philosophical truth it needs the even the analogies needs to be based on uh, shastric evidence right yeah thanks so much prabhu so much clarity in everything you tell i really appreciate all your classes prabhu ji hari krishna thanks Hi Krishna, thank you so much, Prabhu Ji. So Prabhu Ji, my you know continuation what Sukhsagri Mataji was asking, and you were quoting about Rama Sukhdas. So why right. such people when they come to the right conclusion, why they have to deviate themselves and write all those philosophies just to mislead everyone? Same thing happened with Vyas Dev also. What what was in seventeen Puranas? <laughs> but we can say that at that time maybe he was like like narad muni was not there to show him the right path so same is the case here everybody needs their personal narad muni mm uh-huh. mm and therefore bhakti comes only through the bhagavat mm uh-huh. very true yeah thank you prabhu thank you so much anybody else has any questions any comments Mataji, I had one more question. Can I ask? Does Prabhu have time? Yeah, yeah, I have all the time. Prabhu ji has all has... night for you all. He's good at it. The night has just begun. <laughs> Thank you so much, Prabhu ji. Thank you, Mataji. ji. Prabhu ji, the when it, it's like it's putting me in so much of anxiety because the thing that you said about regarding giving an analogy to Sukhsagari Mata ji. like often even in our bhagavatam classes and i myself also if i am supposed to be guilty then i am guilty we give analogies like you know saying like uh, things like tainted glass uh, if we see the world with the tainted glass or a painted glass and we will see the world with the same color that the glass is painted with and um, analogies these are also tatva where we are trying to saying that you know the three modes of nature because we are contaminated what we see is also not perfect that's what prabhupad says but to explain it even further to put it like prabhupad gives the example of fan even if the karma we are doing bhakti the karma is going little by little how you switch off the fan and it does not stop immediately that example so prabhupad is prabhupad i am not i am not at that level to make example but often to uh, you know make it easier for people to relate to even philosophy sometimes we try to give with the example which are more relatable so that is not authorized prabhu i mean please speak the truth and so that if, you know if you want to if you want to give an analogy in the class and if you are not sure about it then give an analogy which has been given by the previous acharyas so don't make up a new a new analogy that's all i can say hmm? okay. because the analogies which have been given by previous acharyas they are rooted in the shruti smriti vakyas like you say maya has you know various colors in her various modes so there is a shruti vakya ajam ekam lohita krishna shuklam so there is one unborn energy which is reddish blackish whitish <laughs> colors have been assigned to her <laughs> and where is it uh, mentioned prabhu you said this is from the shruti ajam ekam okay. lohita krishna shuklam this is from the upanishads okay 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 so this is like a mode of nature so whichever mode we are in we will perceive the things like that that's what it related to yes okay so yeah, yeah. so this is vetashvatar upanishad okay. uh, ajam ekam lohita krishna shikla okay okay so prabhu need to be more careful i'm talking for myself for giving an analogy because i feel this way i can explain better so i cross my limit and instead of i mean of course i mentioned prabhupad's example but sometimes i fall short of because of lack of my knowledge so i i tend to make analogy with feel so i will be careful prabhu thank you so much for saying that prabhu thank you prabhu hari krishna dandavat 
Hare Krishna, thank you, Mataji. Hare Krishna Prabhu. Um, yeah, I have a few a uh, few questions about um, the Vedas in general. One is about I've never been clear on Shruti versus Smriti. I've heard that Smriti is that which is remembered, and and Shruti is that which is those which are spoken directly by Krishna. Mm -hmm. But my my confusion is that in Bhagavatam, um, the Bhagavatam is considered a Purana, and Puranas mm -hmm. are considered Smriti. But in, in the Bhagavatam, we find that we find Krishna's, you know, directly speaking. So <laughs> that would seem to make it a uh, shruti. So can you clarify this for me, please? Yeah, so the thing is, <laughs> shruti is that which, you know, it is emanating from the body of the Lord at the beginning of creation, that is Shruti. I hope that is clear. Okay. So that which emanated from the body of the Lord at the beginning of creation, it ha it emanated in a specific sequence also. Rig, Sam, Yajur, Atharva. The sequence is also very important. So mm -hmm. the, even the sequence cannot be changed. So that, that is, is known as Shruti. And it exists since time immemorial. So now Bhagavat Puran, Srimad Bhagavatam and all the Puranas were existing in a seed-like format within those Shrutis, within those original Vedas. Then Vyasadev took the Chatushloki, uh, the four verses, and then he expanded upon it by his own Smriti, by his own memory, by his own Smaran Shakti, by his own potency to meditate. So, since it came from the mind of a sage, from the smriti of a sage, therefore, technically, the Bhagavatam is categorized as smriti. But for the Gaudiya Vaishnavas, we consider this smriti to be on an equal level with the Vedas. Because Vyasadeva himself said that Panchama Veda, it's the fifth Veda, that Itihas and Puranas are the fifth Veda. So, actually, Vedas are only four. How can there be a fifth Veda? The fifth Veda is Itihas and Puran. So it's like a supplementary portion of the Vedas, which is, and especially Bhagavatam is considered to be as good as the original four Vedas by our Gaudiya Vaishnava Sampradaya. Well, it kind of seems like Bhagavatam is can, can fall under both categories. It can fall under both categories, but there's also so there's some many differences between Shruti and Smriti. Shruti Vedas, uh, they have swaras, they have intonations. Have you have you have you ever heard recitation Veda recitation? Some. Yeah. So they have these uh, pitches. Mm -hmm, yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, right. So the Brahmanas when they chant, they have this swar. They will raise their hand. They lower their hand when they're chanting. So, Vedas have specific pitches. You might be remembering the incident of um, uh, uh, Tvashta, uh, when Indra was, uh, when Vritrasur was supposed to kill Indra, but because there was a fault in the in one of the pitch of the mantra, so the opposite result came, and instead Indra ended up killing Vritrasur. Mm -hmm. So that is the Vedas have specific intonations. But the Smritis are flat tone. They are one sing ek shruti. Ek, they're all in on single intonation. They don't have these things. This is one major difference between Shruti and Smriti. Swara. Swara means the pitches are there in the Shruti. They are preserved in oral tradition. But uh, they are not there in Smriti. Because Smritis are realizations of the sages upon the Shruti. That is what they are. Ah, what what are the um what is that sequence in which the Vedas were spoken? That's mentioned in the Brihadaranya Upanishad that Rigved, uh, Rigved, Samved, Yajurved, Atharvved. This was the sequence. Even inside the Vedas, there is a sequence of words, the sequence of hymns 
cannot be changed. You cannot say I'll put him one as him ten and him ten as him one. So you can't even change the order of the hymns. Even within hymns, you cannot change the order of the words. In words, you cannot change the order of intonation. Nothing can be changed. That is Shruti. Ver version one point zero is perfect. That is Shruti. Okay, so just to see if I understood you properly, um, Shruti is that which is spoken by Krishna at the beginning of creation. Yeah, that which emanates from his breathing at the beginning of creation. That is Shruti. That which emanates from his breathing, but that sounds like you know even all universes. That doesn't no, sound no. like I'm, I'm, I'm saying the shabda, the sounds which oh, emanate oh. from it. Okay. That is yeah. shruti. Uh-huh. And so since Vyasadev, he uh, let's say elaborated on that shruti. For that mm -hmm. reason, it's you know, based on his I guess memory, for that mm -hmm. reason it's called smriti. Is yeah, but in, Bhag in Bhagavatam, he embedded some Shrutis in the Bhagavatam. Like in the first verse, there is Dhimahi. You might have seen in the first verse, there is Dhimahi. Mm -hmm. And this Dhimahi is from Gayatri. Gayatri is from the Veda. <laughs> mm -hmm. I hope you are able to understand. So he shruti fied the Bhagavat Smriti. Say again? He shruti fied the Bhagavat Smriti. Oh, oh. I hope uh -huh. you are. Yeah. Hmm? Yes, yes, yes. He brought okay. it up to the level, level of Shruti. That is mm -hmm. what he mm -hmm. um, uh, So aside from the four Vedas, there are no, no other Shruti exists, is it? Yeah, there are also Brahmanas, Aranyakas, Upanishads. There, there's a huge variety of Shruti literature. But the main, the crux of all the Shrutis is the four Vedas. Everything else revolves around these four Vedas. All the other Shruti literature revolves around these four Vedas. Okay. Um, now the Upanishads was my next question. That's another thing that's always been uh, cloudy for me. I thought I once understood that the Upanishads are a section or like the end section of each one of the Vedas. Is that correct? Yeah, the Upanishads are the concluding sections of the various Vedas. But there is a difference in the Adhikari, the person who is eligible for understanding Vedas and the person who is eligible for understanding the Upanishads. See, in the Vedas, uh, every single statement that is made in the Vedas, it has a Viniyog. Viniyog means application. For example, there is a mantra for purification given in the Rig Veda, Apohishtha. It begins like Apohishtha. That is how it begins. So, the mantra is not just theoretical. Every mantra has some application. So, this mantra for purification, when is it supposed to be chanted? So, it is its Viniyog, its application is when one is taking bath. So when one is taking bath, one is supposed to chant the mantra. If one is a qualified Brahmana, one is supposed to chant Apohishtha. So that mantra of the Vedas doesn't simply remain a theory. It has some application. So every mantra of the Veda has some application. But that applications one has to know from a Guru or from the other Shastras such as Brahmana, Brahmana Shastras. But the Upanishads, when it says Isha Vasyam Idam Sarvam Yatkincham Jagatyam Jagat, when the Upanishad section begins, no Viniyoga, no application is found in worldly duties. When it says Isha Vasya Midam Sarva, when the Upanishad section begins, where in day-to-day -day worldly life will you apply it? So there is no material application of these Shrutis. So therefore, the Upanishads are a part of the Vedas, but the Adhikari, the person eligible for understanding them is a different person than the person who is eligible for the four Vedas. So I hope this shed some light on the Upanishads. Um, are, are they, at, are they the, would you say that they are the concluding sections of each of the four? 
the philosophy. We can say they're the, yeah, we can say they're Veda Anta. They are the Anta conclusion of the Veda. That's that that I explained earlier. But I'm explaining in some detail. See, every statement in the Veda has to have some application in your everyday material life. Otherwise, the statement will become useless if it has no application. Mm-hmm. For example, the first mantra of Rig Veda is glorifying Agni. Agni ira purohitam. So there has to be an application. So when you are lighting the yagya fire, if you then at that time you know that time you have to invoke Agni. That time the mantra has to be spoken. So every mantra has some application in sub Vedic karma. But the mantras of the Upanishads have no application in Vedic karma. I hope you are able to understand. Yeah, so I, the, so that's why they are considered like like philosophical Siddhanta. Right. Thing, right. right? right. Mm-hmm. Okay, and then um, one other thing about the the Vedas is, um, you know, you you said something that made me realize for the first time that a person can be a follower, a strict follower of the Vedas, yet not be part of one of the four sampradaya, Vaishnav sampradayas. Right. So, so you, what would you call those Vedic sampradayas or what would you say? How do you? Well, I, was born, I was born in one time, smart Brahman. You have seen those people? Yeah, the, the three lines. Uh-huh. Yes. <laughs> All Pakka Vedic. Mm. So, so for example, those who follow Shiva, right? The Shivites, they you would call them. See, they, they, mm. There are see, there are um, even amongst followers of Shiva, there are various divisions. Some people who are Shivites are dead against Mayavad. Dead against Mayavad. Mm-hmm. They will say that we want the personal form of Lord Shiva. We don't believe in this impersonal form of Lord Shiva. And there are oh. some Shaivites who are very much into Advaitvad. And you know, so Shiva Advaitvad. Mm-hmm. So in, in Shaivism also, there are many flavors. But for, for us Vaishnavas, from a distance, it seems that it's all, you know, black and white but there are many shades in Shaivism and even though these are like bona fide followers of the Vedas yes um, they they can I mean in other words somebody can be Advaita and still be a bona fide follower of the Vedas see some see this is the the opinion of the Vaishnava Acharyas is you take any philosophy but, you know, don't take this Mayavad. You can take Brahmavad. Brahmavad is separate from Mayavad. And, you know, Brahmavad, you can be a Brahmavadi like Shukdev Goswami was. You don't need to belong to any of the four Vaishnava Sampradaya, but you can be a Vedic person. But if you take to Mayavad, externally you look Vedic, but your philosophy is pseudo-Buddhist. That's the problem. But my, when you mentioned that those particular Shaivites who mm. are Advaita, mm. they were are they not Mayavadi? Yeah, they are. But but then they, yeah, but then then can then we cannot consider them a, a strict follower of the Vedas, then right? Yeah, we cannot consider them. We don't consider them. Hmm. That we is very important. But other schools of Vedas, they accept them. That's okay. You know, every see Vedic philosophy is like everybody stay peacefully. You know, you have philosophical differences, that's all right. As long as you're not at each other's throat, you can stay peacefully. Okay, so this we that's very important refers to Vaishnavas only. Yes, obviously. It's, <laughs> Okay. Yeah, just one last, last question. Um, 
I actually missed. <laughs> I could go back to the recording, but it'll take me a long time. To See, one thing, one thing, one thing is we Vaishnavas we don't agree with Advaitvad. We don't agree with impersonalists. But then there are many places wherein we recognize them also. I want to give an example of this where Prabhupada in the translation he is uh, quoting something and uh, I'll share my screen and you only can read the translation and see what Prabhupada is saying in the translation. So I'm highlighting this. So please read the translation, Mataji. Mm. Okay. One can attain the path of liberation from material bondage only by endeavoring Oh, rendering, <laughs> only by rendering service to highly advanced spiritual personalities. These personalities are impersonalists and devotees. Yes. Validation is given. This is the translation of Bhagavatam 5.5.2, Rishabdev's teachings, second verse. Prabhupada goes ahead and says whether one wants to merge into the Lord's existence or wants to associate with the personality of Godhead. One should render service to the Mahatma. So they are all Mahatmas. Even the impersonalists are Mahatmas. We should have all respect for those impersonalists also, even though we don't uh, share philosophy with them. But we should never, uh, we should never deny their renunciation. We should never deny the fact that they also consider themselves to be Vedic. Mm. Wow, well, I mean, for Prabhupada to endorse, mm, I know, for, for him to endorse this statement, for you know, for he, for him who was such a staunch, you know, protester against Mayavadi, against Mayavad, not against the person. Yeah, my, yeah, my about okay. But here, it sounds like, for you know, it's it's like endorsing a person approaching a myvad for the sake of liberation from material bondage. Yes, because in, to merge in the Lord is also one of the five types of liberation, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. So how does one attain that? If one wants to attain, what is the path? Certainly not approaching a Vaishnava. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And on this point, could you um you you did bring it up and I've I'm wanting clarification, the, the distinction between Mayavad and Brahmavad again. Yeah. And yeah, Brahma, yeah. Brahmavad does not deny the energies uh, of the Lord. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mayavad denies the existence of Bhagavan's energies. Okay. Okay, Prabhu. And Mayavad, Brahmavad never says that Brahma becomes shrouded by Maya. But Mayavad says that Brahma becomes shrouded by Maya. Maya becomes more powerful than Brahma. Therefore, the philosophy was named as Mayavad. The more, then if Brahma is overpowered by Maya, then who is the most powerful entity in the entire equation? Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah. <laughs> If Maya is the most powerful entity, then the philosophy should not be known as Brahmavad. The philosophy should be known as Mayavad. Mm -hmm. That's the reason why they call it Mayavad. So Brahmavads, they they acknowledge that the absolute truth has various energies, but the only thing huh. is that they don't recognize a personality. Right. The absolute truth has various energies and the absolute truth controls the energies. Mayavad, the absolute truth has no energies and somehow the energy is an illusion and that illusory energy caps captures the absolute. Mayavad. But the, but the Brahmavadis, if, if the absolute truth controls the energies, then if there is controlling going on, then how could, in their view, how could there not be personality? Because, see, there is a personality also, but the impersonal aspect is superior to the personality. I hope you are able to understand. The energy exists. It is controlled by the personal aspect. 
but the impersonal aspect is the most supreme that is brahmavad oh i'm sorry i was on mute i was asking if i was asking then who is that personality in their view that is subordinate to the impersonal vishnu brahma and shiva okay ganesh mm-hmm. vishnu brahma shiva ganesh shakti surya ityadi every the various vedic deities yeah so brahma and you know surya for example we see as living entities but so the brahmavadis do not see them as living entities jiva brahma is jiva but vishnu vishnu is vishnu is you know they consider vishnu to be an expansion of brahma so vishnu oh. is subordinate i hope you are able yeah. to this i'm saying that they see per- personalities as subordinate to the impersonal right and 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 so <laughs> So what I was asking was that therefore do they not consider personalities like Surya and Brahma to be jiva? Surya is Narayan, no? Surya Narayan. Oh Surya Narayan. Yes, Surya is Narayan. The entire Gayatri, Brahma Gayatri is about worshiping Surya Narayan. I was thinking Surya in terms of the sun god. Narayan is is an expansion of narayan oh oh i didn't know that okay. mm-hmm. and 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 lord brahma do they consider him jiva or not they also have that understanding that in some kalpas brahma is a jiva some kalpas vishnu himself expands as brahma okay okay prabhu thank you thank you so much hari right. Oh, Prabhuji, we have one more raise hand. Sagri Mataji, but do we have time, Prabhuji? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You didn't say that, but I just wanted to ask you. Okay, Mataji, Sagri Mataji. Hare Krishna, Prabhuji. Uh, since Shastras were being discussed, I just thought it would be a right time to ask this question. Um, I have uh, some friends, Prabhuji, uh, I mean... they are very well placed materially i mean highly educated and in uh, you know good positions and uh, it it kind of gets a difficult um, trying to um, um, you know tell them that the shastras and the vedas they have all the truths in them and their basic argument is that this is so male oriented and uh, uh, very chauvinistic in that sense and they like it's not a good scripture for women you know and uh, and and for some reason most of the content there is addressed to men you know in the male bodies that way so uh, how do i tell them that this is applicable to anybody on the spirit soul level you know they're just not i mean they just won't subscribe to it they say it's like totally uh, you know a uh, demeaning things were written about women and things like that prabhu ji how do i try to convince them that there are more higher truths you know just leave away those certain parts parts like that right see there is a difference between these people and yourself there is a very basic difference between these people and yourself you you are you have tried to convince these you know people whom you know your relatives and these relatives have not you know responded favorably and uh, it's understood that you know uh, why they have not responded favorably because they say that these shastras are like these they are not you know they are only meant for uh, men so the thing is mata ji you have bhakti adhikar you know you have the eligibility to perform bhakti but there is a reason why you have bhakti adhikar because the first stage of bhakti is shraddha and shila jiva goswami in bhakti rasamrit sindhu he says very clearly what is shraddha so he says shastrarth vishwas eva shraddha that to have an innate 
understanding of shastras and in an innate belief in the shastras that what shastra says is correct that is shraddha now these friends of yours do they take a bath every day yes or no yes prabhu ji they are very cultured that way uh, yeah okay uh, why, why do they take a uh, who taught them that they should take a bath every day um uh, just a, a style of living prabhu which is like been taught by parents and by yeah, the family who who taught the parents um their parents and grandparents and so forth and where is the root of all of that of course it goes back to krishna it, it is in shastra yes mm mm-hmm. so in their childhood they were taught don't lie don't speak lies the parents taught who taught the parents well their parents and then it goes yeah. back to shastra shastra says satyam vada dharmam chara satya mm-hmm. kaho speak the truth dharmam chara walk on the path of religiosity mm-hmm. so these people they are automatically following shastra just because they are born in a cultured family but if you tell them to follow shastra they don't have shastriya shraddha they don't have faith in that shastra because they have not been taught properly they don't they the previous samskaras are not sufficient for them to have shastriya shraddha mm-hmm. when we when we take prasad we remind ourselves maha prasade govinde naam brahmani vaishnave swalpa punya vatam rajan vishwaso nahi vajayate so what is the meaning of swalpa punya vatam rajan vishwaso nahi vajayate do you know i don't know like verbatim the whole uh, meaning prabhu ji like every swalpa punya vatam those were very little piety they can vishwas ho na jaye the they can't easily put faith on these transcendental entities so there is a restriction in shastra ashraddha dhane pi ashrinvati somebody is ashraddha dhan not faithful ashrinvati and on top of that they are not willing to listen yes cha upadesha and then we still give them upadesha then becomes nama prad so mm-hmm. better we keep some distance these people are not eligible they don't have bhakti sh- bhakti shraddha they don't have shastra shastri shraddha so upeksha upeksha means all right time will teach you no problem <laughs> that's what can be done they don't have brahma jigyasa in them they are born in very cultured family this and that they live a royal life they have been blessed by with good family children everything is nice but one slap from krishna or from one slap from maya you know some you know some big calamity falls on the family then brahma jigyasa will come oh why did this happen to me so sometimes one slap from maya is needed but we shouldn't pray that happens but sometimes that is what is needed shiv sure, prabhu thank you uh, also um is yes, sorry that kind of slipped my mind thank you so much prabhu ji hari krishna hari krishna hari krishna is there anybody having any more questions for prabhu ji Uh, it's already 12 o'clock and it's getting late also if no more questions we can close the call here and i'll thank you mata ji saying it's a wonderful session thank you so much so then we will end here i would like to offer my obeisances to prabhu ji and all the vaishnavas assembled on the call vancha kalpa taropiyasya kripa sindhu kiya yocha padilana pavane to vaishnavi yo namo nama ananta koti vaishnavi ki jai shri la prabhu pad ki jai ki jai is hari parshad prabhu ji ki jai 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 classes prabhu ji thank you so much thank you prabhu hari krishna thank you prabhu ji hari krishna so deep class Yes, thank you, Prabhuji. <laughs> so we'll meet again tomorrow. Also, it's the same. Part two is there. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna.